Hi, welcome to the video, Three Keys to Learning Partner Dance. In this video, I'm going to take you over three things that you can do to improve your partner dancing so that you can learn it more effectively and with greater speed than you have to date. Now, before I go too far, I should probably tell you a bit about myself. My name's Clint Steele. I started dancing a few years ago, and I'm the kind of person that likes to learn things and master things. So I'm always looking for ways to improve my dance. But I focus more on the way I learn to dance and the attributes that allow me to dance well. So in this particular video, we're not going to talk about specific dances such as cha-cha or waltz or anything like that. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the way you learn and the attributes that you can develop so that you're a naturally better dancer. So what are the three keys to better partner dance? Well, based on my experience, we've got things such as musicality, free movement, and aware learning. And I'll go through each of these in turn now. Now, musicality. At the start, my musicality was pretty poor. I couldn't actually hear beats. I had really no sense of rhythm or anything like that. And one of the reasons for this is that I was one of those people that focused on lyrics and not on the actual beat in the music, which is quite a common problem. So instead of spending all my time in class trying to understand musicality and not learning my dance lesson, I decided to go away and find techniques that were going to help me develop my musicality. And to do that, I looked to musicians. And I came across two exercises that actually helped me a lot, and I think they'll help you a lot as well. The first one was just simply tapping your fingers in time with music. So what you do is get yourself a piece of music. It could be anything, preferably something you like, because you're going to be listening to it for a while. And when you listen to it, just try to focus on the actual music. Try to block out the actual lyrics. Just focus on the music and try to start picking up on a cycle. And in particular, try to pick up on a certain beat or a certain instrument that comes in on a regular basis. And that's going to be the start of one of the bars. And every time that beat comes in, just tap one of your fingers. And just keep on doing that until you reach that point where you can preempt it and you're tapping in time with it. And then, once you've got that with another finger, say on the other hand, you tap for the other beats. So if it was a song that was four beats to the bar, which most of them are, then you tap with the first finger on the first beat, and then you go two, three, four with your other finger. And just keep on doing that. Now, this might be only your hands, but what you're doing is you're training your body to respond to music. And this will carry over to the way you move the rest of your body with music as well. So if you can do it with your hands or your fingers, you will be able to do it with the rest of your body. The next exercise actually came from a drummer, and this was an exercise to really improve your ability to keep time. Simply get yourself a metronome. You can get one online free. You can get a phone application or you can buy a real one. Set your metronome up, have it running, and then just simply clap in time with the metronome. Every time it puts out a beat, you clap. Eventually, you'll be clapping at exactly the same time as a metronome, and that will give you a really good sense of timing, or at least better than what you had. So if you apply these two exercises, the finger tapping and the clapping with the metronome, you'll find that your musicality will increase at least enough so that you, when you are learning a new dance, you can focus on the dance and not worry about being out of time. Now, for free body movement, you don't need to be able to move as freely as the individual in this particular slide. But if your body just can't move the way you want it to move, then no amount of trying is actually going to help you achieve a particular move. Now, I was lucky in this area because I had done martial arts beforehand. And in the martial arts I'd done, everything was led with the hips. So they used to spend quite a significant amount of time training everybody to improve the way their hips moved. And eventually, I got to have some fairly free-moving hips. Beforehand, they just weren't. And what this demonstrated to me is that dedicated physical exercise can help with things like this. Once again, there's no point in wasting your time in your dance class trying to get your hips to move or your shoulders to move or something like that instead of actually learning the dance move. You're better off going somewhere else and doing some dedicated exercise to free up your body. Now, the key areas of your body that you want to look at are your hips, your core, and your shoulders. The reason for this is that in daily life, most of us will walk around a bit, we'll use our arms a bit and things like that. So our hands, wrists, ankles, knees, feet, they move reasonably well. However, because we're sitting so much, we don't really get a chance for our hips to move much. Uh, we'll often get a weak core and our shoulders will start to slouch. So these are the three things that you really do want to work on. Now, if you wanted to work on those, you'd consider some suitable exercises, such as say Pilates, obviously martial arts, but it doesn't need to be 
exactly martial arts. It could be boxing or it could be boxer size or any kind of exercise that is actually dynamic and works the whole body. You don't want to go to the gym and just do a lot of stomach crunches to build up your core strength or just lift weights to make your shoulders stronger because what you need is a dynamic ability. You don't so much need to be strong, what you need is to have free body movement. So any exercise you engage in, make sure they're actually taking your body through a full range of motion and that they're enabling your body to move as freely as you would want it to move so that when you're actually doing your dance class, you can actually make your body do what you want. Now, aware learning. This is um, something a bit different. I actually love learning. I study a lot and I also teach, so I know a bit about the way people learn. And what I've come to realize is that dance is not for rote learners or really for criticism. A lot of us might have a background where a lot of what we had to learn was actually just remembering things. We had to remember our times table, we had to remember how to spell words. And if we got it wrong, we just simply got negative feedback and we had to try harder. Dance is a lot more like learning to walk or learning to talk. You can't just be told or commanded what to learn. You actually need to go through an iterative feedback process and it's really the unconscious mind that teaches you how to do these things. Now, you probably can't remember learning to walk and you probably can't remember learning to talk. But you've probably seen some babies do it and you realize that they basically watch other people, they know what they want to achieve and they try a few different things and the unconscious mind eventually works out how to do it. The closest thing that you can possibly remember would be learning to ride a bike. Nobody gave you precise instructions. They perhaps told you to keep your feet on the pedals and pedal to move forward and here's where the brake is and make sure you steer away from things that you might hit. But they really didn't tell you how to move your body into the pedal. They didn't really tell you how to sit. They didn't really tell you how to balance or things like that. You worked that out naturally. And that's what dance is like. And when you were learning to ride your bike, you naturally knew where to put your focus. But dance is a little bit more complicated, so we actually need to put conscious effort into deciding where we should put our focus. Once you start focusing on the right part of your body or on the right aspect, you'll find that your unconscious mind will take over and you'll start learning a lot faster. So the next time you're in a dance class, ask yourself, or maybe even ask the dance teacher, you know, where should you feel tension in your body? For example, you might be trying to achieve a move and you think all the effort comes from your stomach and so you feel all this tension in your stomach. But it might actually be that it's meant to be coming from your feet or your ankles. And as soon as you realize this, you'll start focusing more on how your ankles feel or how your feet feel or something like that instead of your uh, abdominal muscles. And then the body will be able to move the way you want it to move because your unconscious mind has worked out where the focus should be because you told it. Uh, ask yourself other questions such as how well balanced you are. Also, and this is unique to partner dancing, how does your partner feel? What does your partner do? So if you're a lead, you might have given a certain signal, but your partner ended up someplace different to where you expected them to go. Why did that happen? Once again, this is feedback for your unconscious mind. If you're a follow, then you might take a certain step because you got what you thought was a certain signal from the lead, and the lead might say, but I expected you to go somewhere else. Why did that happen? Now obviously with leading and following it's two people there so it might be a little bit tricky to work out who made the mistake and who didn't but the important thing is that you take a look at what your input was, what your output was and you just think about it and you just focus on that and then your unconscious mind will naturally start to adjust the way you learn. So at this stage you might be wondering if this is actually going to help you. Well I actually have an email list where I send out regular emails telling people about things that they can do to help improve the way they dance. And it's essentially more detail and a greater expansion upon what I've covered in this video. And occasionally these people write back to me and they say things like what's highlighted here. You know, people can see that they're, they're getting the maximum out of their body and movement. People say that they've got more educated thoughts and they're making more educated decisions about the way they dance and other people are saying you know, this fits perfectly with what they went through during their last class. So a lot of other people are using these ideas and they're getting results. And so that means it will probably work for you too. So please give some thought to really trying to apply the things that we've covered in this video so that you can improve your dancing as well. Now if you do want to learn more then uh, go to my website www.dancebetternow.com and there's actually a free ebook you can get there. It's about 40 pages and it just goes into a lot more detail about some of the principles that we've covered in this video. It's free. All you need to do is put in your email address and I'll uh, send the details to you. 
So thanks for watching this video, and I hope to hear from you soon if you want to share some ideas on how to improve your partner dancing. Take care.